So the Asian swing over for the men and the majority of the WTA final spots locked in. It's been a really big week on the ATP and WTA. Let's have a look at actually the past results last week because we of course had a 1,000 event on both sides and also let's see how the WTA finals especially is shaping up. Alright, starting on the WTA side, we had Wuhan, the return of the Wuhan Open after a five-year hiatus and Sabalenka, the two-time defending champion from 2018-2019, beat Zhang in the final 6-3, 5-7, to lift her third trophy in a row. She's never lost in Wuhan. Wuhan. And then over in Shanghai, we had Djokovic versus Sinner in the final. First time since the Australian Open those two have played. And it was Sinner winning 7-6-6-3 in that final to lift his seventh trophy of the year and solidify his spot as the year-end number one as well during the week. So massive from Sinner to beat Djokovic again and massive for Sabalenka. They seem to win a lot of titles in the same weeks. Let's have a look at the players that went up in the rankings outside the top 10 this week. Starting with Mahatch. He actually went up eight spots to a career high number 25 in the world after having a great run making the semifinals of Shanghai. Frey also created high for her, going up three spots number 24 in the world after having a really good run. And Wong, after making the semifinals in Wuhan, goes up 12 spots to 39 in the world this week. So players there that perform really well in these 1000s, gaining a lot of points. Some of the players that dropped down the rankings outside the top 10. Quarter, he went down three spots to 22 in the world after losing points from this time last year. Marijan also dropping nine spots to number 57 in the world. And Fernandez dropping six spots to number 34 in the world after losing all those points from this time last year. So a bit tough for some of those players. Some of those players didn't even get to defend those points this week in in the big tournaments, but that's what happens. If you don't play the tournaments that you've made a lot of points at, you're going to drop in the rankings pretty badly. Okay, let's start on the WTA side of things. Not too many changes to the top 10 with Sriontek staying at one and Sabalenka at two, but the gap between them is only a couple of uh, less than 100 points going into the WTA finals in a few weeks. So really keen to see how that one-two battle goes over the next couple of weeks. We did have a little bit of a change in the middle though with Goff going up to number three, pushing Pagula down to number four. We're back in her. She stays at five, Paulini at six, Zhang at seven, Navarro at Eight, Collins at nine, and Krajikova dropping out of the top 10, making way for a Daj Meyer who goes up two spots into that number 10 spot, which is where she has been a career high before. So back in the top 10 for the first time in a while. But man, that one two battle between Sviantic and Sabalenka is really heating up. And it's going to be really fun to watch over the next couple of weeks. All right, let's go over the WTF finals now. And we did have some big changes. And of course, a lot of players starting to qualify. Sabalenka, she goes up to number one, pushing Sviantic down number two. Just shows how good Sabalenka has been all year. Also, a little bit of a change with Goff going up to number three. Paulini going up to number four, pushing Rabakina down to number five. Pagula goes to number six. Zhang, she goes up one spot to number seven, pushing Navarro down to number eight. Collins at nine, and of course, Krajikova, who's already qualified, will round out the rankings for this week. She's actually number 12 in the rankings, but because she won Wimbledon, she gets in. But the players that have qualified, Goff, Paulini, Rabakina, and Pagula have all qualified, which means there is only one spot up for grabs. And so far, with a good week in Wuhan, Zhang has got that spot. But Navarro still has a chance. She just has to do really well over the next couple of weeks, and a very outside chance chance is Collins, but it seems like Zhang is going to take that last spot. If she can play well over the next couple weeks, she is still playing, and Navarro, she's going to have to do a lot of work to make up the difference. Going over to the men's side of things now, and no changes at the top, with Sinner at number one, and Elkris at two. Zverev at three, and Djokovic at four. Medvedev comes in at number five. But Taylor Fritz, he goes up to number six, pushing Rublev down to number seven. Hubi Hercatch falls out of the top ten completely, with Rude going up to number eight. Demonor's back in the top ten, going up to number nine, two spots higher than last week, despite not playing at all this week. And Dimitrov's still at number ten there, staying there there for another week. But yeah, her catch not playing in Shanghai and losing a lot of points, dropping out of the top 10, and he's really in danger for missing the ADB finals as well, which we'll talk about in a second. All right, going over to the ADB finals and still only three players qualified with Sinner, Alcaraz, and Zverev. No changes to those rankings. They're still the only three players qualified. Medvedev not too far behind to qualify at number four with Fritz at number five. But Novak Djokovic, he goes from number nine into number six after making the final in Shanghai, pushing Rude down to number seven, Rublev down to number eight, Demonor down to number nine, and Dimitri of hanging on to that top 10 spot for now. But big move by Djokovic, putting himself in the race to the finals and almost making 4,000 points, which usually, if you get between 4,000 and 5,000 points, gets you qualified. So Djokovic only has to play well in Paris at the end of the year, and he's all but qualified. And of course, guys behind him have to do really well. Guys like Demon or Rublev have to play well over the next couple of weeks if they're going to even trouble Djokovic on missing the finals. So it just goes to show one good week in a 1,000 event can really help you in this race to the finals, especially towards the end of it, with the spots starting to get locked in. So there you go. Lots of things to talk about this week. Of course, with the season coming to an end, this is what happens. Players are starting to qualify for the WTA and ATP finals over the next couple of weeks, or probably in the next week. Medvedev will probably qualify. Fritz is not far behind. Djokovic is back in contention. It's been a big, big week of tennis, but let me know down in the comments below. What's been your most, I guess, your favorite part of the week? Has it been Djokovic making a final again of an ATP 1000 event? Maybe Sinner and Sabalenka winning again at the same week. They did it in Cincinnati. They did it in Australia. They did it in New York. And now they've done it for the fourth time, winning a title 
title in the same week. It's very strange. And they're both going to be number one in the world. As we get to the end of the year, of course, Fiontek has a lot of work to do if she's going to be the number one in the world at the end of the year. But there it is. Those are the rankings. A lot of changes this week.